This is For The Creators. Welcome back to another episode of For The Creators, guys. This is a snapshot episode. We're here today with Cassie Rowan, the Senior Music Manager at Shazam UK. And today we're just going to find out a bit about Cassie and also find out how to use Shazam for artists. So it should be an interesting one. This is really to just shine a spotlight on Shazam and, you know, get everyone to know all the functions of the app are and how they can make better use of it. So, yes, so... Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks welcome. for coming down. We really appreciate it. No worries. So just to start, um, what is Shazam for people that don't know what, what Shazam is? So it is a music recognition app and it recognises music around you if you press the Shazam button. It will tell you what's playing. Um, there are a lot of other functionalities within the app as well as just pressing the Shazam button. But as a start, that is the basic element and function of Shazam. So it helps people identify songs and sounds. Yeah. Cool. And it's available in, obviously, the App Store and Google Play and everywhere else. Yeah, it's available everywhere, yeah, worldwide. Cool. Yeah, so can we just ask, like, before we get into the app itself, how did you get into um, Shazam? How did you become the senior music manager there? So... I started off as an intern. I saw an internship advertised. I was at the time working with a singer and I was part time. I was freelancing in the industry and I got the internship and that was three months worth of interning. And that was about four and a half years ago. Wow. <laughs> uh, time goes really quick. Um, so I, yeah, interned for three months and then I started on the music team. Uh, I actually started part time and then I went full time. I became a music manager and then last year I became a senior music manager. And that's my journey from starting <laughs> yeah. as an intern four and a half years ago um, till now. So. so what does the role of a senior manager entail? So there's a very wide variety of things that I do. Um, but mainly I search for new music, um, just making sure that the app has everything on there. So, for example, from demo stages of a song or uh, just mastered uh, to when it's released to make sure that we have all the music Mm -hmm. Um, to make sure that when tracks are out that we are connecting them up to stores that we're just making sure everything is in place and the track looks good so when you shazam it there's artwork it has the right name all those things um I do some of the charts as well that go out weekly. So we do a Shazam chart we send out on Mondays and it highlights um, different countries and and different charts. So we have a future hits chart. I won't go into it in too much detail, (laughs) but we have a mailer that goes out and charts on the website and that's all based on data. We have uh, artist visits uh, that I manage in the UK office as well. So a ton of different things. Um, but yeah, so we have artist visits in the UK office and as well in the New York, New York office. Mm-hmm. Are those but, artist visits only for people who are signed or can it be up and coming artists as well? Um, no, we have both unsigned and signed. I've done also done sessions with unsigned artists as well. So yeah. Cool. So it, is it very much uh, like you're part of the curation curation per- process of what music is supported by Shazam. Yeah, so just making sure that Shazam is aware of what's being released, aware of who's bringing out what, who's working with who, what we need to be ahead of, um, just making sure that we are in charge of new music and that everything looks good because the worst thing would be if someone dropped a track, say if Nicki Minaj dropped a song and we didn't have it for any mm. reason. Yep. Um, obviously, when you release music, it will be sent to Shazam, but we're actively making sure that we have everything on Shazam, which is like being a detective. <laughs> <laughs> it's really difficult. So it's it's A and R, but we're not signing artists or songs. Yeah, mm. makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's very interesting. It's just a w filling a weird gap. It's it's it's, it's really different to A and R working at a label. Mm. You don't have any pressure to sign artists, but you're aware of who's big and who's making waves and who's doing well and the people who are they have a bit of a buzz about them and just making sure that we touch base with those artists that they come into the office that we just yeah make sure we know what they're doing so how do you normally find these artists is it like through social media youtube yeah. like what sources do you normally use so we have obviously we tap into our own source we can see what's happening on shazam but also outside of shazam just like blogs Social media, yeah, everywhere, to be honest. I've, I have a big list of YouTube channels and blogs that I follow and I'm just constantly making sure I'm aware of everything that's happening, which, again, is really hard yes, <laughs> to yeah. keep up. You always have to be ahead, of, ahead of the curve. Yeah. It's across all genres as well, so it's yeah. not even like to say it's just R&B or hip-hop. No, it's of course. It's every yeah. genre, it's so every, that yeah. is a big big task yeah it's every genre and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs being released every single day yeah so it's just it's absolutely insane to keep up but we try we do try our best and yeah we we do try and help people as much as we can how much does your own taste uh lend to the process of of the curation so um to be honest it doesn't because I don't listen to all the tracks that I am finding or adding. I mm -hmm. just know what will be shazammed more than other genres. Right. And you can choose to concentrate on those genres. The, the aim of the game for us is to make sure everything shazams. Mm. So if it's a song that, say, is going to be on TV or, or potentially go to radio, we want to make sure we have those tracks before that happens. So if I'm going to go and add, I don't want to call out any genres, but if it's a genre that is just not going to be shazammed as much, mm. it's fine for us adding it. It's just you have to concentrate on also, y y there's only a certain amount of time in the day. Sure. So it's just about making sure everything is shazammable mm. on the app. Um, but I literally do hundreds of different genres every yeah. genre to be fair there's nothing that we don't do because it's a certain genre it's just there's only a few of us who do this worldwide so we're just concentrating on just trying to get everything that is has a slight buzz about it yeah yeah um, and is the buzz purely like data driven or is it so we just can like you're putting the feelers out there and you kind of know that your fingers on the pulse so it's is yeah yeah do you do you make the decision or does the data make the decision? So it's it's odd because you can if you release a track and it goes through distribution and it comes to us, it'll be on Shazam either way. And if you were to get a radio play, I can see a spike. Right. Um so we can we can see everything. If if, for example, the song isn't on Shazam and someone wants it to be, there's no reason why we wouldn't we we don't add it. It's not it, we don't need to pick and choose because, like I said, we're not signing music. We're just making it available. Yeah, we're just making it Shazamble mm. for the public. So, if you know, it just could be anything. Um, the only thing that I choose is uh, who plays the sessions for the office, and that is. Um, a choice which I am limited to to one or two artists a month right. so that I have to choose really carefully and that's just down to making sure the office see a selection of genres mm -hmm. um, they have been signed and unsigned artists but that's probably the only thing where I have more choice in who plays artist visits again it, it well, we welcome anybody so it can be again signed and unsigned artists we're not fussy on who it is or what genre they make um it's just if someone approaches me and they're interested in coming into the office and they have a release coming up and they want to talk about it they're welcome so yeah yeah so can you tell the the established artists and up-and-coming artists out there what the various benefits of coming in and and, and pitching themselves for yeah. shazam artists yeah so we have um we have a lot of different features which I take artists through at artist visits. Um, there's a lot of benefits for artists. I would say the first thing out of anything that they can do is go on the Shazam app and just have a look around 
outside of just the Shazam button. That's my first piece of advice because a lot of people don't realize what we have to offer because they, to be honest, like just they just haven't looked yet. And the worst thing would be is to come in and and you haven't looked <laughs> right. um, or you don't necessarily, they might not even use the app, but for a case of coming into the office and wanting to learn more, it sounds really obvious, but just download the app if you haven't already and have a look around and see what tabs are there. There's a tab either side of the homepage. There's all your Shazams, which you can play on streaming sites. There's a discover tab for music that it thinks you'd like to listen to. Uh, there's artist profiles. There's so much. Does the artist get to see their insights on Shazam through the artist profile? Yeah, you can. Uh, if you are verified or if you want to be verified, you can go um, online on our website. There's a verification page. You can apply for verification and through that you can see your insights. Right. That's so cool. what level of detail does the insights go into? Do you get to see it? Because I know, I don't want to name drop Spotify, but <laughs> I know Spotify breaks it down yeah. in terms of like, who's listening to your music in what country, male or female, yeah. also compares you to art to similar artists yeah. to yourself. And it really narrows it all the way down to... Um, Right down to the location, so they'll be able to tell you who listens, how many people listen to your music in Tower Hill. Yeah. So it's really good. Do you offer that level of detail um, on Shazam or not to that? Uh, exp- that not to that level. That's a quite um, that's quite pinpointed information. But we do offer um, Shazam's location, male and female demographics. Mm. Okay. You know. And I guess yeah. the difference is. This is where people are hearing your music. Hearing mm. your music in the wild, it's like it's not yeah. based on listeners. Yeah, it's not yeah. based because if I'm listening to something on on a streaming um, site, it's yeah. it's either I've obviously like discovered it or you know I'm listening You're to it over and over fan, and over. Yeah. Yeah. But um, Shazam is like when you hear something, you don't know what it is, and it's literally the doorway, right? Yeah, it's just the point where people get out their phones and they say, "I want to know what this song is." So it's organic fans who want to know your music mm-hmm. for good or bad I don't know it's just they just want to know what it is so mm. usually people shazam as well to add to their playlists because it's just an extra button to add to your playlist if you're already logged in on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever streaming site you use Google Play um, you can just press that button on the on the page once you've Shazam a song and yeah, I do that a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's it to be honest it I don't want I don't like the um the phrase kill two birds of one stone poor things but they um <laughs> they, they it does because you can when you get people to Shazam your music they can also stream it so you're making people stream your music but yeah, you're effectively to, yeah. to be honest yeah you're very true yeah. very true and the more Shazams it gets the, the yeah. higher it goes up in the Shazam yeah. charts as well which then exactly. yeah. gets more eyeballs on it which exactly. is why it's important to make sure that it's on Shazam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, it's 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 so it's so actually a lot easier to do than people think because they a lot of the time people say, "How do I get Shazams when I'm not my track isn't going to radio?" or mm. "How do I push my song?" And the answers are there's a lot of ways in which a lot of places where you can put the audio and a lot of ways in which you can get people to shazam your music social media is so important and i just say to people make sure your music is in places where they people can hear your music it doesn't mm. necessarily have to be radio or tv but just have it everywhere online people shazam off youtube people mm. will shazam off anywhere if you have you know imagine Imagine just for example, Drake puts a YouTube video up. That song is going to be Shazammed, whether it's because people want to stream it or because they want to. Someone's playing it in the background and they yeah. want to find out what it is. Mm-hmm. It's just people. I don't think they realise how much people Shazam from online and social media. Mm. And I know it sounds silly because the name is on the YouTube video or on the SoundCloud link, whatever you're you're listening from. But imagine you go to a party and someone's got, I don't know, a YouTube playlist on and people Shazam it and that's happening all, all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, that night, it's it really racks up Shazam numbers. So I always just say to people, make sure 
your music is with us and people can shazam it and then it's in a place where people can shazam it. Absolutely. So what about if someone's performing live? Is mm-hmm. that shazamable? So there's a few... Yeah, so it depends. If it's a backing track, which is quite strong, so, for example, Justin Bieber plays um, on Graham Norton, let's just say, the backing track instrumental will probably pick up because it's strong enough. Mm-hmm. Um I, I say Justin Bieber as an example because he may have less live instruments. If it's a live instrumental band, then that won't pick up at all because it's all yeah. live. But if you have something which is strong or a DJ set where they're just playing music, if the frequency or speed isn't changed, it will pick up. Yeah. But things like that will affect it. So the moment a DJ mixes it with another track or pitch shifter or anything plays with the audio in any way it won't pick up unless it's similar enough for the system to think it's the same song. Right. Um, live, you can send us audio and live audio mm. as well if you want to. And you can make, if you want something Shazamable, you can send it to me or our team and we can process that as well. What I can do is if somebody has a track that they would like to add to Shazam, they can email it to me, just like MP3 or WAV file. We don't need ISRC codes or anything like that or any other details. Yeah. We just need the music and the artist name and title. And if you have artwork, we can add artwork. But that's a really good tool for people who either aren't releasing the tracks and want it on Shazam or want to have it on Shazam before the song's released. Yeah. What's the ideal lead time? So before a um, single comes out or an album comes out, how how, how long they sh- should they give it? I would say, I would say to send it through, to be honest, as early as you can, mm. because if you've got a release coming out, say in August, but you know that someone is going to play that on the radio before. So say... For example, you know that one extra are going to play your track, they've got the music, you may have had feedback saying that they want to play it uh, closer to release day. Sometimes, sometimes, radio don't may not say when they're going to play your song, so sometimes you don't even know. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. And it's just best to send us the music just in case you don't know you're getting radio play and you do, because the worst thing would be to have a radio play, especially a first one. Mm-hmm. People... I like what is the song go for their phone and nothing comes back and you've just lost a hundred people and potential streams as well yeah um so you've just lost all those people realizing who you are and that power is so strong because especially on a radio premiere um it's just so important to catch those people who want to know what your music is because definitely yeah they'll go follow you on socials and all the rest of it so it's so instinctive isn't it yeah mm-hmm. So on, on an artist's profile, is there any way, so you know, like on YouTube, for example, there's links to your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram yeah. on your profile. Yeah. Is, can you link um, Shazam to your socials? Uh, no, you can't. But what you can do is you can post links, any hyperlink you want from your artist account. So if you're verified, there's an option to post to your followers. So your followers are anyone who's ever Shazam your music. Mm-hmm. So if you go onto our website and type your artist name in, you'll be able to see how many people collectively have Shazam you. Oh, wow. And it will say how many Shazams overall just underneath your name. And when you can, when you get verified and go on the dashboard you have the option to post either a Shazam or an update of your own music. So, hey guys, I've got a new track out or I just Shazam this song. So you can show other people what you're listening to because as an artist, you're a tastemaker and people want to know what you're listening to. So a lot of the time I tell people, you know, just let the world know what you're listening to and let the world mm-hmm. know what you're doing on your music. Yeah. And it's... It's... A tool, I don't want to say social media, it's not a social media tool, but it's just for music. So it's for people to share music and for them to share their music updates with other artists and the people who have Shazam them. So it's people who are a fan and they may not follow you on social media. They may not know when your next single is. So you can mm. tap into that audience. You know, it's, 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 
it's a bit slightly more effort for someone to go on to your social media sites and click follow. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 depending on what you you put up on the different social yeah. media yeah. Um, apps. You know, if you're just into that artist's yeah. music and not necessarily like everything that they're yeah. posting, maybe they did. Yeah, I should use. Uh, yeah, Shazam exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of artists as well that don't like using social media. They don't like posting all the time. They're, they're mm-hmm. kind of sick of it. They, it's, sometimes it's getting a bit boring. Mm. You don't really always want to see people people's lunch. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, it's just, it's a bit much. People say, you know, you have to post every day on Instagram and your numbers have to go up. Like, mm. you don't. It's ridiculous. Like, I say to people, post post once a week just to let people know what you're doing or mm-hmm. just to give a bit of an update but you really I just feel like people are getting way too into posting so much and everything's just so diluted that nothing really makes an impact anymore mm-hmm. and this is got, this is a way of just posting your new track and also if you do post something so if you do want to post your social media links or your new song whatever it is it will stay as a pinned post on your artist profile until you post something else. So, oh, okay, cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, so if you just want to post your YouTube video or something and you just want to have another place for it to be viewed. Oh, so you can, oh, yeah, because you can post links so you can yeah. essentially post a video as yeah, well. Yeah, you can post a video, so. That's good. And also, yeah. I guess the benefit is that it's a captive audience. They're there to listen to your music because yeah. mm-hmm. they've Shazammed it already. Exactly. And it's just another place to have a YouTube video link mm-hmm. and... Yeah, it's just really good to have that there because it looks good and otherwise that is just empty if you don't post anything on it. So as a, as a listener, can mm. I do I have a profile as well in terms of like, so say the artist shares their YouTube link, can I as a listener then share it? Mm. Does listeners have friends and followers? No, so you have an account but you don't have... You, you can't post because you're not an artist. Only, so only so verified only artists, artists can post, can yeah. Post, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to be verified to post. So it's almost like being at a concert, if you think about it, because the yeah. audience, you turn up and you, you wait until the performers come out. Yeah. But it's not like you're not really allowed on stage. <laughs> it's not an open mic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't just go up and <laughs> shout what you want. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it's just, it's just for artists to be able to show, you, you know, what they're doing. Mm. And that's it. It's not for people to post their lunch does does Shazam recommend artists to the um, listeners so if for example you realise that I'm always Shazamming music within a specific genre um, do you then start recommending people to me or or new up and coming artists who you feel might fit based on all all the things I've listened to in the past yeah there's a few different ways in which we do that so if you swipe left on the homepage there's a discover tab and based on what you've shazammed you can see there's about 10 updates a day and daily it will just show you songs it thinks you'd want to listen to videos and people's artist posts um so it just gives you a brief selection of things it thinks you'd like there's also if you shazam on snapchat which i can talk about there is recommended artists at the bottom of that page um, as well. There's, they, I think it recommends like three artists. In in Snapchat? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, and yeah, we have a next to no discovery selection of four artists a month that we highlight as well. And you mm. can also see that on the Discover tab. So it's literally, if, if everyone has a chance then, is that what you're, you're saying? Yeah, everyone can post... Everyone can get verified. To get verified, you just need to prove it's you via social media um, passwords. Mm -hmm. Once you are verified, you can post. And you can post links, pictures, anything. You don't just have to post music. And the Discover tab is an automatic selection. It's it's not anything that we curate. It's just based on what you've Shazam. So just based on the music you've you've sh- shazammed just so it gives you things that you would actually like rather than just random mm-hmm. music yeah yeah does the listener of does the listener get to rate a song or anything like that or no. likes or yeah you can like comments yeah you can like a post and 
the artist can see how many likes and views they've had on a post. Okay. That's really yeah. good. So it's, yeah, from an artist standpoint, you want yeah. to give yourself the best chance. You need to sign up yeah. um, to Shazam. You need to put your links on there. You need to get your music to, yeah. to Cassie. <laughs> because then you're saying the Discover tab is mm-hmm. automatic. Yeah. So say, for example, if... Okay, personally, I've shazammed over 500 artists so for me the discover tab is pretty random and i shazam a lot for work so i get a a very large variety of artists but say for example if you've shazam 10 artists in your on your time in that account some people have new accounts or new phones based on those 10 artists you'll get updates from them and you'll also get the posts from similar artists um recommended songs etc so it's probably more diluted for me, but mm-hmm. for someone else who has less Shazams, they'll probably get a more, um, I don't know what you call it, um, specific yeah. range of tracks that it would think that user would like. And then that is then fed into Snapchat. That's so the Snapchat is, we partnered with Snapchat last year. And if you hold down, if you have the camera facing away from you, and hold down the screen, it will shazam. It, you'll probably see the circle with the uh, musical notes flashing. Mm. And it so it used to be how you um, put a face filter on someone's face. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then they changed it. So to put a filter on someone's face, you tap and hold down is to shazam. Mm-hmm. It shazam straight from the app so you don't have to leave the app. Because a lot of people are using Snapchat all the time. They're just course, Snapchatting yeah. everything. Yeah. So instead of leaving it and then trying to Shazam it and then missing the song, you just hold down the screen. It will bring up the result. And if you click song information and scroll down, it will give you the the artist picture, the YouTube video, the lyrics, if available and recommended artists. That's an amazing opportunity. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if you're not on Shazam, if your music's not even as an unsigned artist, yeah. then you're not you're not getting that opportunity we'll because that, yeah. You, yeah. also like when you seriously like when you release your music even on SoundCloud, you don't know how mm. far that can travel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As soon as one person likes it, that person may be a DJ. That yeah, person may exactly. be playing out to a thousand people. Those thousand people need to know what that song yeah. is, you know. And if they're going to do that by Snapchat, which everyone yeah. uses, then yeah, it's a massive opportunity. Yeah, and I'm also thinking that DJs must use it, use Shazam a lot as well to try yeah. and find new music. So imagine yeah. if you if someone just attends an event and or they go out of London, for example, they go to Manchester, but someone might be really popular locally, mm. and their music is constantly mm. playing. That might be a way yeah. for them to get signed essentially because they're missing out on opportunity by yeah. just not being on Shazam yeah because yeah. that with, with obviously like Spotify there's limitations because mm. you have to have like a distributor normally or a record label in order to get your music onto um, Spotify but with Shazam it's so straightforward so it's almost a way to because um, I feel like you'd be able to then like if you had a record label who demonstrated interest in you or maybe if you were pitching yourself to a record label you can then say look my music's on Shazam and I've got all of these people like literally Shazam in my music yeah and that demonstrates that I have an audience outside yeah. of just social media mm-hmm. so it's like additional insights that you can add and then at least you know these people are just interested in music as well because sometimes you can have a social profile people like your personality yeah, yeah. that's yeah. why they're following you or or your looks mm. Yeah, they like how you look. They like yeah. your personality. They might yeah. like everything else you post, but your music. Yeah. <laughs> some people just have nice personalities. Mm-hmm. So I feel like Shazam actually gives you yeah. data that is about your music. If someone Shazams your music, yeah. it's probably because they like it. Like, I'm not going to Shazam something that I dislike. I'm just going to be like, oh my God, what is that? And just move <laughs> just on. Either, yeah. But if I go all the way to like, yeah. take out my phone and Shazam it, then that must mean I'm genuinely interested. So I feel like a lot of yeah. artists are missing out on an opportunity. Here. That's a very mm-hmm. good point. That's a very good point because, yeah, that is, you know, if they're making an action, it's mm-hmm. almost like buying a song, right, in this day and age. Yeah. Because if you're not, if you don't like it, you're not going to pay attention to it. You're exactly. not going to take no, that. It's, it's like, I need to hear this because exactly. they might, the song might, I do it in restaurants all the time, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a producer. Yeah. So for me, I'm, if I hear something that I want to sample, even though it shouldn't really be something. <laughs> um, if I if I hear something, I have to find it. Yeah. And I've got so I've got a banging playlist of, yeah. of things that I've just heard randomly that that I want to sample, sample and that I will sample. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's frowned upon. I know. <laughs> no, but yeah. I, I just think that this is something that really needs mm-hmm. to be sold to unsigned artists because I feel like a lot of them are probably. I yeah. think what what happens in most cases is people hear about these massive brands and mm. they just think that you're kind of like untouchable yeah. or like they're small fry and yeah. like you'd never you'd never consider them. But with Shazam, it's it's not even in the same way as like getting onto a Spotify yeah. playlist. It's literally like you just want music. So you're not yeah. going to like discriminate or say to yeah. anyone, well, this is really terrible, <laughs> but still, it's still someone might like it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so exactly. if you're a new artist, like you should yeah. be on Shazam. Exactly. I feel like it's so important. Yeah, it's, it's so underestimated, I think, by artists and also by, by people who have um, even have they have an artist signed and you know they don't necessarily realize actually how much impact an unreleased song being on shazam can have because by the time you've released it you like you said you've already got shazams on there you can then pitch it to people you can pitch it to labels and say my song's quite reactive something's happening you know someone's playing it somewhere mm. and that's a very good point yeah. yeah it really helps getting record deals uh, I, yeah, obviously I don't I, work at I didn't before. think about it before <laughs> yeah. but it, it must do because mm-hmm. it's genuine feedback yeah. about yeah, your yeah. music yeah. it's probably better than social media to me yeah. because yeah because you can't dist- like you said you can't distinguish uh, your following count from mm-hmm. like, do they like your music though but that's mm. why live like live shows are so important because it's tangible yeah. people can see oh there's 500 people here yeah. dancing to your music but exactly. Shazam is the digital version of, of that. So performing live, mm. yeah. It's it's almost like it's absolutely essential mm. for for new artists to to get on Shazam. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you know, like for example, where you have an art. So for example, Drake. <laughs> I'm assuming that most people, did, like for example, the amount of streams that he had in a week, it was mm. nearly like over a billion. Mm-hmm. Was that reflected on Shazam as well? Yeah. So at the moment. He is climbing our charts. I think he's a number one in the US chart and he's about number three or two in the global chart at the moment. Um, yeah, it's Solo's who's, who's num- number one. Uh, Solo, Clean Bandit, and Demi Lovato, number one in the world. In the world? Yeah, right now. And I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure Drake's number one in the US this week. Wow. Uh, he's definitely climbing up you can yeah. it's from release you can see where they entered the chart and then where they are now it's really interesting to see how quickly it takes some people go straight in mm. in the worldwide chart potentially potentially to number one but it takes a lot to get to number one in the worldwide chart um obviously you have to be number one in a lot of other countries For you have sure, to yeah. have a lot of other traffic so and is it is that like the is shazam ahead of the curve in terms of the trend so is it like yeah. it peaks on shazam first and then it's yeah, reflected yeah. in the other charts and stuff i would say so because it has to it has to be shazammed a lot for not for it to get into the charts like for example, I've seen a lot of people who have a lot of streams and they don't have a lot of Shazams. Mm. It doesn't always reflect, but someone like Drake, obviously the amount of radio play he has, yeah, it's not, you, mm-hmm. you're going to get Shazammed. Yeah. And, you know, Solo by Clean Bandit has just absolutely taken off. And mm. that's number one. Um, previous to that, it was One Kiss by Kevin Harris and Julipa. Yes. That's obviously everywhere. So yeah, yeah. it's just, it just depends. It has to be a song which is just everywhere. Mm. And... It, it you literally can't get away from that song you literally hear it on the radio all the time it has to be on all a lists you know in the us uk mm-hmm. everywhere it's just crazy songs i mean ed sheeran was number one for weeks on end and no one could not come off the top no of course not <laughs> it it's ed sheeran's world we all just yeah <laughs> no because that just got me thinking about like unsigned artists again so for example mm-hmm. if you're an unsigned artist you've got the independent radio stations mm-hmm. who would be more willing to play you so yeah. you've got an independent radio station yeah. playing you but you're not on shazam so no one's going to be able to find your music yeah you, yeah. Know, so you need to make yourself discoverable you yeah you do. need to yeah. make yourself discoverable yeah yeah and i've spoken to artists before who said they were using distribution platforms to just put the music on Shazam because you uh, some distributors you can choose what where you put it so you can choose Spotify only or sure yeah um, and um, some I think just do Shazam only but you can send you can send it and I can manually add it for you it's fine it's free 
I would say don't do that because then when you release your song, you then have to pay again, mm-hmm. and it's just a shame to have to pay twice. Yeah. I've heard a couple of people do it, but I would just say just send me the music. Um, but it, yeah, it's just it's just so important. And I've had a lot of people say, oh yeah, we, you know, we signed this track because we shazammed it, and or they saw the amount of shazams, and you know, it's quite frequent that that happens because yeah. they can see the traffic is is true it's real, yeah. real traffic so do you think like a and i's in that you shazam a lot do you get yeah. that feedback from them yeah it's definitely a tool because my first uh major release on a major label it was mad like that I mean, climbed yeah. it yeah. went top oh, of number it, one yeah. yeah it went top of um shazam yeah that's crazy uk and i was oh, like nice. wow. <laughs> well done. yeah it was it was mad but it was like more than anything because it the song was on c-list and then on radio one then b-list then a-list mm. Um, and I started seeing it on TV around and stuff. That's but so cool. Shazam, that's what I was like, no, people are actually feeling it. Yeah. Because it takes a, it takes you to be like, ooh, what's that? Mm. Mm. To take your phone out to then identify yeah. what that song is. Yeah. So for uh for for a creator and for an artist, that's just like the validation that, that you want. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And this was before streaming numbers and stuff as yeah. well. This is a few years years ago. Um but it's still super important yeah it, but what it, was, it was just quite astounding actually because now you're saying how <laughs> difficult it is to to climb that chart oh, it wasn't a global yeah. chart but still it was like yeah I mean it's weird because a lot of people think it's really hard to it is hard to get into the charts you do need radio play or you need something if you're going to get into our charts you need something where your music is played in multiple places that mm. week, so it racks like, up in like an advert, them. for example, mm-hmm. TV advert. Yeah, TV adverts. I mean, sinks. I mean, Love Island. If you people shazam on Love Island every day, and they shazam a lot, and there's tracks which are climbing our charts because we've like there's been a sink on Love Island. Yeah, and it's really pushed them up up the chart. I just think. People, especially artists, it's so hard to think of everything, especially if you're unsigned. So it's no one would say, okay, let me send this to Shazam, unless they've either come across someone on the Shazam team or seen a panel or know someone who's come in. It's just a word of mouth thing of what are the opportunities that we can offer. So unless you've actually spoken to somebody, you know, the feedback I get is, oh, I didn't know that existed or I didn't know I could do Mm -hmm. this or, you know, this is really helpful and we just want to help artists be discovered um, as much as we can. So however we can do that to help them and the first initial thing is just having a music discoverable Mm. and just making sure it's with me or someone on the team and that is just the first step because then you can start promoting your music Mm -hmm. some people even test their music in clubs so for example send three tracks if they're you know a dj and they'll test to see which one gets the biggest reaction and then release that song that is really good that's really good tool for real (laughs) yeah that's definitely like one of my biggest tips for anyone who does um any kind of club track Mm. If you don't know what to release, you can do that for for a test. And because people used to do it in different ways or just see the natural reaction, see how it reacted and then do it. But if you want to send it to us, you can and then do it that way as well. That's really, really good because music is so much of literally shooting in the dark. Mm. Like and there's you, so much noise You're based out on there your intuition, well. do you know what I mean? And you're, you're just releasing songs that yeah. you and your team believe in and everyone's put yeah. like investment behind and, and stuff like that. But exactly. doing it that way, especially as an unsigned artist yeah. who mm-hmm. may not necessarily have a, a massive team and all of that behind them. Yeah. Um, like for a, a producer DJ, for example, yeah. would be perfect because you've got five yeah. tracks. You've got an EP, which, what's what's the single? Yeah, Send it to exactly, Shazam. Yeah. To like get artists to, because I feel like artists... They automatically think, you know, promotion on social media, have a YouTube channel. We need to get Shazam in that conversation. So mm. it's part of the process of being an artist. It should be step one. getting yourself out there. It you need to one. make sure your yeah. music is on, on Shazam. Definitely. Definitely. This has been brilliant. This has been brilliant. Yeah, no yeah problem. so yeah. informative. Um, thank you. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm glad that it helps and 
you know, just happy to help artists and, um, you know, try not to, like you said, just release it in the dark and just try and help them have a step so that they, when they do release it somewhere. Yeah. So are there any new developments or anything to the app that's coming that artists should be excited about that you can talk about? Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> I would say we always have different features um, being built and we always have, um, you know, different partnerships and there's a lot of exciting things uh, coming but you just have to have a look at and see what they are. Mm-hmm. Sign up. Sign yeah. up. And Download the app. Also, where can we find you online? So it's obviously www.shazam.com. Yes. So... That's where you can find all the charts and um, the verification. Um, I think it's slash verification. Mm-hmm. If you can't find it, just message me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and on socials? Yeah. So socials as well. There's Shazam for Artists, Twitter and Instagram. My personal Instagram is Cassie and then an X, Rowan. If you type Cassie Rowan, you'll probably find me. There's not many of us. <laughs> there was only one other one that was on her TV show, and I couldn't believe it. But, oh, right. um, and, and you've got an X Factor. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> and then, yeah, and I've got the Twitter handle. So I was like, I was like, oh my God, there's actually another one in the world. This is incredible. But um, yeah, Cassie Rowan on Twitter. Even though I don't use Twitter that much, I just complain like every now and then. Cassie so. spelled C A S S I E. Yes, and then Rowan is R O W A N. That's it. I think that's about it. Yeah. 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 So, guys, you know, if you're an up and coming artist, if you're an unsigned artist, if you're a signed artist, and your music isn't on Shazam, it needs to be on there because if, if you've listened to this far, it means that you understand <laughs> the importance of being on Shazam. Yeah. And if you if you um. If you want to ask Cassie any questions and you're scared to contact her directly, you can always DM us or send us an email at forthecreatorsshow at gmail.com and we will pass the messages on to um, Cassie for you. But yes, it's been an amazing session. It's been really insightful. Really, so I mean, I'm into apps and I'm into music <laughs> and I learn a lot, so I'm oh, sure everyone good. would have as well. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> no, no, You're it's welcome. our pleasure. As usual, guys, remember to subscribe, review, and comment, um, and also um, follow us on all social media platforms. We're uh, we're at for the creators podcast on Instagram and for underscore the creators on Twitter and for the creators podcast on Facebook. Yes. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Thanks, Cassie. Thank you.